Assalamualaikum and hello viewers, as well as new viewers uh, within the UK and uh, wherever you are in the world. Uh, my name is Mina Chiktai and I'm your host for today. Welcome to the Let's Talk show, British Muslim TV. We're live once again here in Wakefield and we're also live on Twitter as well as Facebook. So please, like any other day, uh, if you have any questions with respect to the topic, of discussion today, then please do ring in. I would really appreciate it. So please do join us today with this discussion. The number is 01924-231083. So please do ring in with your questions or alternatively you can message on 7 So um, like I said, my name is Samina Chiktai and I'm your host for today. So it's that time of the evening, that time of the week, when we're going to be discussing an amazing topic of discussion with our guest. So, you know, you must come across some inspirational people in your life and they must have had amazing journeys. You know how you have those rare moments, those rare people and you think, wow. So today we have one such individual, our guest. He's absolutely amazing. And the topic is going to be about his journey to to get into where he is now, today. So it's about his journey. So he is a lecturer currently at the Higher Education Academy uh, for the University of Bradford. He also has a PhD in Civil and Structural Engineering from the University of Bradford. Also, he um, has had numerous research positions. He has also been a guest speaker of various countries, including Spain, talking about his electrical engineering, talking about, you know, his um, career, talking about inspirational things and also about his publications. And also, can you believe it, he's also translated a book which is Life in the UK in Arabic. So, without any further hesitation, I would like to welcome our guest today by the name of Dr. Avesar Avid. Thank you very much, Samina. Aslan, you're welcome. Aslan, brother, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Yes. How are you doing? Uh, I'm okay, thank you. I'm okay, thank you. I'm all wrapped up today because, you know, it's quite cold. Uh, yes, you know, yes. and uh, yes. so I just thought I need it today. And anyway, um, you know, it's typical British weather, isn't it? Particularly when um, it, it, it's winter. Um, so we have to wrap up. But anyway, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. And um, so I hope I've introduced you uh, as much as I could and I've covered the key points. But please, if you're wanting to share a bit more about yourself with myself and the audience. Well, thank you so much for this uh, opportunity. First of all, I would like to thank um, the British Muslim TV for having me this evening and also to thank every other the you viewers and listeners to this um, show. My name is uh, Awesa Abid, and I am originally from Iraq. I fled my home country in um, 2000 when I was only young. Uh, this was due to the um, conflict, the political conflict, the civil war we had at the time, and the um, regime. Uh, when it was in charge of the country. Um, I started to come into the UK. Um, I couldn't speak really good English and um, it was very tough timing. Um, I left my country, uh, my parents, my siblings, all by myself to come to the UK. And I started from the scratch. So um, I started going to... Um, uh, into educations with GCSEs, but it was not easy because um, at the time uh, I didn't have a great welcome in terms of my case and um, to settle. Um, but it took about six years and then um, I started going to college and then university. I have managed to finish my diploma um, higher National Diploma, HND in construction. And then I went straight to university to do my bachelor's in civil and structural engineering. 
and I um, decided to go abroad and work as a civil engineer. And um, I picked up a few experience. Then I came back to um, Bradford University to do my master's in civil and structural engineering. Then I thought, OK, um, let me get involved in the academic um, career and wanted to challenge um, what is it in the academic that people are uh, teaching and um, passing on the knowledge to others. So I went abroad. I was a lecturer at university level uh, mm -hmm. in Iraq. Then I thought um, there is one more thing I need to do uh, to get a PhD to become a doctor in uh, civil and structural engineering. Then I came back to the UK and went back to the University of Bradford and I have managed to finish my PhD. Mashallah. And became a doctor, thank you. When uh, did you actually complete your PhD? It was uh, from the uh, same university, University of Bradford in the UK. Yeah, no, I no, I meant as in when did you actually, you know, get your PhD? Oh yeah, it was in 2020, only uh, two years ago. Okay, mashallah. Yeah, so then uh, um, I had a very good opportunity to start working uh, with higher education for both Bolton University and uh, Bradford University, which we are based in the college here in Bradford. We are running the bachelor uh, degree for the mechanical and uh, also for the uh, construction. Okay. So yeah. Mashallah, amazing. Good. So you couldn't stay away from the books. <laughs> 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 Whatever next. <laughs> <laughs> You're not thinking of uh, actually doing another degree in something completely different, completely different well, my, occupation, career. My next plan, uh, it will be uh, to become a professor in a few years time inshallah inshallah so inshallah a professor in my um, industry will be something amazing but yeah. uh, that doesn't need further education it only needs few uh, journal publications and conferences and you supervise students mm. and uh, teaching for a few years and then you can pick up uh, more experience in the field yeah mashallah that's amazing and you know that's even a lot of commitment there isn't it very passionate Thanks. about what you're doing Thanks. um you know structural and civil engineering wow and it's not an easy uh, career to go into and in terms of academia as well it's probably all figures and calculations and formulas which i was never good at uh, so um <laughs> Yeah, so well done. And particularly you. when you came to this country in 2000, you mm -hmm. came. So you've been here yeah. 22 years and mm -hmm. not having uh, any insight into the culture, into the lifestyle here, not having the language skills and then to work yourself up um, to uh, where you are currently, whereby you're now actually a lecturer um, yeah. in, uh, well, in higher education uh, yes. for the University of Bradford. Yes. That's right, yeah. So, Marshall, that is a credit to you. Well done. So, I Thanks. wanted to ask you a bit more. If we go back to, you know, the journey to when you actually came uh, to the UK, how do you, do you actually feel when you first came to the UK? Because, you know, as I said, the topic of discussion today is about my journey to get into where I am now. Yeah. So, here you are on yeah. your own. You've fled a difficult situation. You're yeah. a asylum seeker, you're on your own, you don't know any, anybody, you're young, you're probably, what, 17, 18 at the time? That's right, yeah. And um, not knowing what you're probably walking into, the lifestyle, the culture, yeah. being on your own, isolated, and not having the language skills. So what did you actually feel, you know, in the early days? Yeah, very good question. Um, this is actually a lesson to younger generation, where they are from, where they come from, and it doesn't matter where you are, uh, who you are, mm. what ethnicity, what religion, what skin color, what background you have. If you go into a different environment and have opportunities to build yourself up, you've got to take the opportunity and make most of it. That's what I did. I felt um to be in a different environment that might not be the case of me achieving everything but then at the beginning like i mentioned earlier uh, it wasn't easy you know being away from parents and 
mm. relatives and siblings and all by yourself and mm. doing nothing, knowing nothing. Um, I felt really uh, disappointed and frustrated because I was waiting and waiting until the decision came that I could settle and start working and ed doing education, which took a little bit of time. But um, I am still thankful, you know. Yes. Uh, they say, as they say, everything happens for a reason. reason. So, and I yeah. suppose once you got your stay here, um, mm -hmm. then you probably must have felt more settled and you probably then thought, OK, now I can focus. And it propelled you to then concentrating on your education, on your career. Yeah. So in, in, in that respect, I mean, you know, you know, when you came to the UK then and then you, you got your stay, you, the paperwork was done, you got through the bureaucracy, you felt more settled. Did you actually then, you know, to where you are now, to having done your degree, having done your uh, PhD, uh, writing the book, did you actually map it out? Did you actually, you know, uh, build what you were going to achieve? Did you write it down on paper? Was it something that was intentionally done or was it a national, natural progression? For everything in life, I come up with a, a plan. I always prepare a plan to do something. So um, you know, from a very young age, when I was a little kid, I always wanted to plan things and think about what I need to do uh, next day. OK, uh, that's very mature but, thinking. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not <laughs> something easy to do when you uh, grown up in a different environment, different culture, with different everything. And then uh, they don't want to um, give you the opportunity straight away. You've got to work hard for it and you challenge for it. There are lots of barriers. You need to uh, come across them and pass through and then you achieve the final destinations where I am right now. So I did plan a few of these achievements, of course, but mm. then um, it was not easy to achieve them all in one bundle. I had okay. to work hard and went to... OK, to Avesa, I'm so sorry. Avesa, we're going to actually now have a very quick break. Um, so it's only going to be literally for a few minutes. And then, you know, we're going to continue on with this amazing topic of discussion after the break. And uh, then Avesa can then talk about his journey uh, and how he mapped out the future. OK? Folks, please join us after the break. Assalamu and welcome back. My name is Samina Chiktai and I'm the host for today, Let, um, Let's Talk Show, British Muslim TV. So just before the break, uh, we were discussing with our guest speaker today, Evazer, I, I hope I pronounced that properly, Evazer Abid, uh, about you know how he mapped out his journey so can you just continue on with that please thank you well my name is not easy to remember <laughs> um so it is awesa 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 yeah. okay yeah. thank you uh, by the way it is a name of a, a region uh, which is uh, alongside the iranian border a lot of people go there and visit there's mountains and waterfall and green build, environmentally really nice area. That's why they named me after this uh, beautiful region. Yes, uh, mashallah. And you have conquered you. the mountain Thank and you. several mountains, Thank you. Thank uh, you. you know, to uh, reach your target and what you've achieved, mashallah. Thank you. Thank so um, we were talking about, you know, how you mopped out your journey and you said that, you know, some you, ha you had some ideas and some of it was just gradual. Do you want to just finish that answer, please? Yeah, well, um, achieving milestones in life is not going to be easy, only plan it out. You've mm. got to be consistent, you've got to be focused, you've got to have patience about it, you've got to be strong, and few times you might fail, but that doesn't mean like you give up. You will never give up. You've got to stand up and stand on your feet with more strength, and put a lot of effort into everything you do in life. It doesn't mm, matter mm. Uh, how hard it is. You might work hard for it. You might um, uh, go through ups and downs in life. And maybe even people out there, they want to see you fail. 
but you've got to show them what are your skills and the abilities you have, what are you capable of doing so. And that's what I did, you know, it was a bit of mixed of everything really, you know, my own um, challenges in, into things I came across and also lots of uh, motivations for mm -hmm. what I have seen around me. So um, I thought I wanted to do something good in life and to end up in a better position mm. in terms of work and job and, you know, career and settle and, you know, building, making family and have um, a decent life, a decent job, a decent education, a decent degree. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's about it, uh, you know. Really. So, so does that mean then, you know, so can you just explain a bit more? You know, what was your why? What was your purpose? Was your purpose to where you are now? Was it to gain financial, financially, you know, to be, you know, in a better status, better position, uh, you know, to enjoy life in the way that you are enjoying at the moment, to be a pinnacle for society, to be a pinnacle, uh, an example uh, for, you know, the other Iraqi immigrants who had come, who have come to this country, you know, so what was your, you know, your why? Because we can all say that, OK, you know, I want to buy the latest car, I'm wanting to buy the next house, I'm wanting to get become uh, a professor or I wanted to travel uh, um, another country. We all have aspirations, we all have aims, yes? But not all of us can achieve that because we have hurdles, we have difficulties, we may come across tragedies in our life or, um, you know, sometimes we don't have the resources or the skills or the right people around us, OK? Yeah. So what propelled you what was in spite of all that what was the main why what was the why as to why you exactly. wanted to move forward irrespective of everything else what was the main thing that kept you going question again yeah really good question because um when people do um great things in life it might not be only for financial issues or yes. reasons that uh, beyond uh, getting a job and making money. Uh, for my case, it was a bit of both. You know, of course, uh, I have achieved what I have been working hard for it and to get a decent job and, you know, to financially be stable. But um, it was not only that. It was something that I had um, in, in my own a circle i always wanted to achieve the highest level of education so you always had that yeah, desire yeah. even so, as a child exactly when i was only young i was going to primary school and then secondary school i always achieved the highest grades in my class okay. in my okay. school i was number one on ranking for my primary and secondary school and in fact I have achieved the highest grade before I come uh, to the UK uh, to go to uh, College of Medicine, become yes, a medical yes. doctor. But then yes. uh, it was because of the conflict, unfortunately, it didn't uh, go well. So, um, but for me, there are lots of lots of good reasons uh, why I wanted to achieve and okay. be where I am now. Um, maybe when my parents uh, motivated me and wanted to show me uh, to do good in life, that was one of the reasons. And another reason was because I grew up in a very decent, good community and background. Okay. Uh, I, I guess I was lucky because okay. uh, I had some decent friends and we always had this competition in the school and in high school, who is going mm -hmm. to do better in terms of the topics and subjects or get the highest mark and so this was something that we always wanted to do well in terms of education and believe it or not all my friends more or less they are doctors here in the uk or in, in, in uh, some other countries they are in us and australia and canada they work as a doctor medical doctor even engineering doctors okay, okay. doctors in economy and politics and every kind of field you will mention. Right. So, yeah. So what you're saying is that, you know, ever since you were a child, you had that determination. You yeah. wanted to achieve, you wanted to excel, you wanted to become a professional, possibly, like you said, a doctor. But at the same time, you know, what allowed you also to achieve, apart from that mindset, was that you had the right people around you, your yeah. family upbringing, your friends, 
the good supportive network, your challenges, mm -hmm. and that I suppose that that belief within yourself as well. Yes, yeah? yeah. so that's what helped you to achieve that mindset. Yeah. So, you know, that's absolutely amazing what you've achieved okay. and, you know, credit goes to you. And also, like you said, your parents, um, your upbringing, and that made you feel empowered. That's so, right. you know, as all of us, like all of us, we all have possibly difficulties in our lives. Yeah. We have those low points. We have those dark days. So, no doubt, you must have had those low points in your life, having come to the UK, yeah. those dark days, maybe when you were at your lowest. How did you actually get out that rabbit hole? You yeah. know, what <laughs> propelled you yeah. to keep going? Yeah. Because sure. not all of us are skilled. Not all of us feel empowered enough or strong enough to keep going when we're at our lowest. So, how did you actually overcome that? If you can share that with yeah. myself and the yeah. audience, please. Yeah, absolutely. Um... Well, you know, like you mentioned, everybody's got uh, good at bad um, pathways and routes in life. Um, for me, I also had uh, struggles in the past and uh, coming into the country all by myself and mm. uh, doing everything all by myself, you know, mm. going to the school and then uh, coming home and preparing food and, you know, doing all my washing and then keeping everything tidy and clean and then go to work and come back again, doing all these things every day, every week, every yes, month, every yes. year. And it's plus, to and, be, yeah, at all. And, and, and sorry, plus the fact yeah. that you probably had other Iraqi brothers yeah. and sisters around you and other... Yeah. Um, you know, individuals in the community that were immigrants or yeah. that were maybe trying to aspire. And so you probably had other outside influences. So very easily you could have gone off the track. You could have lost your focus. So, yeah. you know, at your lowest points, points, what was that key point, the magic ingredient, which made you think, no, you know, I'm, it may be like this, but I'm going to carry on. I'm going to carry on that chain or, you know, carry on that journey to reach the top of the mountain. Yeah. I think because um, within the community, um, I had people, they were asking me, oh, do you want to become a doctor? Or you think you're going to be a professor? And they they didn't encourage me. Um, they always, um, you know, gave me a negative um, motivation. Somehow, because... Um, I was trying to do better in life. Mm, Unfortunately, mm. that was not uh, the case for them. I um, got up and I uh, managed all uh, the challenges. I broke all the barriers and uh, became who I am nowadays. Yes, mashallah, of, mashallah. Of that motivation, when I, yes. when I felt like people want to see you fail, and then that gives you extra motivation. More motivation, yeah, more to, be, motivation to be yeah, propelled to forward better. further yeah. and to feel more empowered. Yeah, absolutely. Mashallah, yeah. mashallah. Yeah. And I think also you have mentioned that, you know, one of the, well, several of the key ingredients which allowed you to achieve was having faith, being patient, and also yeah. to be focused as well. Um, yeah. You know, so that's absolutely amazing because not everybody can do that. And plus, you know, in Islam, it does say in one of the ayahs, verily, with every hardship comes ease. You know, so it's fluctuating, isn't it? You have your hardships, exactly. that's, you have that's easy true. situation, that's really but true, it's yeah. never going to stay the same. So yeah. I'm sure that's that was done. that kept you going, the faith. Yeah, I was a good uh, role model for all the uh, my fellow countries here in the UK, even outside of the UK, because I have been helping thousands of uh, people in the UK in terms of their jobs, in terms of their work, in terms of the difficulties. I have been um, teaching people in the UK um, how to, you know, like pick up with the English language, how to do their own things and activities and, you know, get into yes. education to do good in terms of, uh, you know, families and settling down, finding them jobs. And, and you know, Avesa, I'm so sorry to inter yeah. intervene there, but we're going to be very much at the end of the show soon. So I just wanted to just recap and just mention very quickly your book, your publication, what you translated into Arabic, Life in the UK. So if you can just very quickly just mention that. Yeah, that was um, 
10 years ago, uh, when a lot of people in the UK meant to take a test to become a British citizen. So um, this company came to me and they asked me right. if I could do it. I'm so yeah. sorry. We, sorry, for, folks. We've very much run out of time. So please do join in next week. And it would be great to have you. So please do not hesitate to join in next week. Bye for now. Bye.